thank you back to Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, where the company announced a slew of software updates, as well as that new M2 chip, which will power a new MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. Our Mark Gurman, who of course covers Apple for us, has been across it all. And of course, Mark, much of this you already reported, but I think there were a few new things. Let's start with this M2 chip. Just how transformational will this chip actually be? So the M2 chip is not a major leap. It is not very transformational. Apple says it's about 18% faster than the M1. Now this is the base model of the M2 chip, right? So you'll see over time, you'll see an M2 Ultra, you'll see an M2 Pro, an M2 Max, maybe an M2 Extreme at the very high end for a Mac Pro eventually. So this is just the beginning of the M2 roadmap. They have to start somewhere. If you remember when they introduced the original M1, November 2020, that appeared first in the Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, in the 13-inch MacBook Pro, which was also updated today uh, with the M2 chip. Well, what is transformational about today? Let's start with the software. Where do you think the most significant updates there are? Yeah, in terms of the software, uh, two things really stood out. The lock screen on iOS 16. People have been asking, iPhone users have been asking for years for this customizability, the ability to personalize your iPhone, right? The iPhone very much from the very beginning, it's you get these wallpapers or you can set an image. Your font's gonna look like this, your home screen's gonna look like this, but they really have moved away from that, letting people really customize the day-to-day -day iPhone experience. So you're seeing that now. You saw a little bit of that with widgets over the last two years. Now you're seeing widgets on the lock screen, your ability to change the font, make more dynamic picture, different filters and such, so that's very cool. Uh, the second thing on the iPad, you're getting this new feature called Stage Manager, which is a new multitasking interface for pro users, and it very much looks like what you would get when multitasking on a Mac. So window resizing, the ability to move windows around, operate four or five different applications at once, so that's a big deal there as well, and I'm looking forward to trying both of those new enhancements out. Well, I'm gonna tell you what I thought was the most transformational, this ability to edit text messages, even unsend text messages. I, I was pretty excited about this, Mark. Um, before we talk about it, I wanna take a listen to Craig Federighi, the you know architect of Apple software, what he had to say about this development. Have you ever sent a message only to immediately realize you didn't quite say what you intended? Well, no worries, because now you can edit any message you just sent. So embarrassing typos can be a thing of the past. Second, have you ever wished you'd never sent that message at all? Well, good news, now you have undo send. So you can immediately recall a recent misfire. That one got a lot of laughs, Mark, here at Apple Park. But seriously, you made the point that Apple got to an edit button before Twitter did. You know, with the edit button, I think Twitter has been overthinking it for years. It's not a complex thing. Maybe in the engineering side it's complex, but I think Twitter's issues were more fundamental. And I think Apple basically just ignore, ignored the noise around it and just did something simple, right? You send a message, you call Gabe Babe, or you call the wrong person Lamb Chop, to use their examples, right? You're able to just tweak that, and you get a little bubble there that says it was edited, and you, and you move on. No biggie, right? But these features have been long requested. Actually, I think there's one feature that people have been clamoring for more than an unsend or an edit button, and that's the ability to mark a message as unread. You know how you can, in your email, if you want to deal with a message later, if you're already read, you just tag it as unread? Well, now you can finally do that in your messages list, so I'm looking forward to that. It's going to help me reply to people more quickly.